What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ecoli Espresso and welcome back to another video here today on the channel. Today is the first of a couple of special videos going live over the weekend. This is the first of many DLC 2 continuum videos for Infinite Warfare second DLC pack coming out this Tuesday. Huge shout out to my good friends at Activision and Infinity Ward for the hospitality and bringing me out to the studio to capture all this footage here for you guys. And I think you guys will enjoy these maps that we have up on tap throughout the weekend. Today we're going to be showcasing a little bit of the Rust remake called Excess. I believe I'll have a little video going live after this one as well, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit and start it out with something that I thought was pretty cool. We're going to be doing in this one five things you didn't know about Excess, the Rust remake within Infinite Warfare DLC 2 Continuum. That might be easy to say that you don't know too much about it because, well, it's the first day that we're allowed to share anything on it, but I wanted to share with you guys some fun facts, some cool little things that you might not find even whenever it comes out, and some inside information from the developers themselves, all while also showcasing what I hold for a very brief period of time, that being a world record for kills on the map excess. Once again, I fully expect this to be broken within the first day of it being live, but the gameplay you'll be watching in the background is an 82 and 16 outing with the NV4 rocking the UAV Scorchers as well as Warden. But let's jump right into our five things that you didn't know about. Firstly, number one here up on the list are actually the buildings and their naming designations. Believe it or not, they're actually all named after team members at Infinity Ward. As for the reasoning why, well, it's actually one of those things that you never really think about about, but makes total sense. And while talking to Eric Monticelli, who is the director of communication at Infinity Ward, it really all made sense in a fashion that it was kind of that light bulb that goes off in your brain on a topic you've never really had to contemplate before. When you go and implement something into a game, obviously if you're making mass amounts of money off of it like Call of Duty will, you'll end up needing the proper copyright protections and the green light that you won't be infringing on anybody else's rights. So when things like this arise that are more peripheral details in the game, they actually use the names of employees at the studio. Being that the Chances of having their last name simply registered and also having specific rights where royalties need to be applied, while that is a slim chance, it's just a matter of, hey, are you cool with your name and likelihood being in a game? And assuming that it's yes, a few forms are filed for legality documentation and whammo. You have a new name for, in this case, buildings in the game. Number two here up on this one, there is a long chain of Easter eggs with teddy bears scattered around the maps within Infinity Ward maps and even within other maps. But this one is absolutely no exception. Exception. If you were to go navigating for yourself to try and find it, it might take you a little bit, but it's not super hidden that you have to try and get out of the map in spectator mode or anything like that that you've had to do in previous years. However, the location of this teddy bear is over by the B flag and by the green plateau. There's a pipe system that's new and a little bit different in how it acts compared to the original rust, but it allows players to jump inside and walk a little bit before falling down to the ground level. However, that said, with this, if you enter and then go to the left, you'll see what looks to be like a bullet train in this tube system and right in the front seat of the train is the beloved Teddy for everyone to behold. Now, unless you are actively looking for it or stumble across it simply by accident, which I kind of did a combination of both, it'd be hard to find it since it's not the most populated location on the map. Not a lot of people are gonna camp out in that tube system. While it's good for the element of surprise here and there, it's not something where you're gonna be like, I'm gonna look at every single detail of this. But number three up on this list today is that Rust was actually originally Rust. And yes, that sounds exactly what you may think. I talked extensively about Rust with David Mickner, Joe Seacott, and it escapes me the names of the other two that were there with me. That's gonna bother me all day because they were absolutely awesome guys. But you'd be surprised to know that for a little bit, Rust was actually the Rust that you remember from Modern Warfare 2, that being just in Infinite Warfare. So the same exact thing just ported over. However, once you get your hands on the DLC, you'll realize that the decision to add on and rescale was definitely for the better. Talking with them, it took about two seconds, sometimes under, to get from one end of the map to the other in the original state, where that was just pulled directly from Modern Warfare 2 and put into Infinite Warfare. While it may upset some people that it is larger, I'll say from feeling out the map, the scale is done quite well. If you were to run from end to end on Modern Warfare 2's Rust and run from end to end on Excess, you'd probably come out with nearly identical results in the timing, so it fits the pace quite well of the game. But as someone who loves hearing about old builds and looking back at where things happen, have come from, I thought it was really cool that they humored the idea of a straight one-to-one -one port of Rust and let it play out in testing. Now, of course, it didn't end up that way, but it's still super cool to think about. Number four, once again, deals with the peripherals, but also taken from the mouths of the developers themselves and the same group that we just mentioned. We talked about there being some in-house naming for legal reasons, but a step further is that the entire theme of the map 
actually revolves around one Infinity Ward employee, that being Paul Hale. While his day job is the position of senior producer at Infinity Ward, he also has a side gig of being what appears to be an interstellar dictator. Not a bad source of income on top of working at Infinity Ward. I'd sure like to have the ability to create games all while having the power to crush a rebel resistance or something when the occasion arises, but all jokes aside, the busts and the posters that you'll see with the iconic full beard, that's Paul from Infinity Ward. Now the fifth and final thing here we're going to be talking about today is one that many people may not care about or many people may not be too fond of, but that being the fact that with the scaling being different, the largest feature of the map is no longer the center console. I guess you could say back in the day the oil derrick was the tallest in Modern Warfare 2, but it was at least a bit closer than that of what the comparison is within Infinite Warfare. Once again, it shouldn't be anything that bothers me, but for some reason it just like kind of stuck in my mind. The hail building though that harbors a spawn in domination, the A flag, is head and shoulders taller than that of the main compound that the entire map is centered around. But of course, with that said, it's just peripheral so you can't climb it or anything like that. And the main focus of the map is still the center compound, but I just thought it was a tad interesting that while the main focus, it was still kind of dwarfed in size by this hail building that gave cover to A flag. So that said though, that is going to conclude the five things you didn't know about excess and conclude the first video showcasing some infinite warfare gameplay on the map. Later on, I got a cool little free for all sniper only gameplay I think I'm gonna put up that is pretty fun to watch we ended up doing pretty well in it but all in all it's just a fun time to play around with everybody and get some nice quick scopes going like the old days back in Modern Warfare 2 but all that said and out of the way hopefully you guys did enjoy hopefully you guys are hyped for DLC 2 continuum comes out this Tuesday if you guys are interested on PlayStation 4 and then 30 days later for Xbox one and PC once again a huge huge shout out to my good friends in Activision and Infinity Ward for the hospitality and for flying me out there for the ability to get this gameplay early for you guys. It was a blast. I had a ton of fun and I'm excited to bring you guys more footage throughout the weekend. If you guys did enjoy the video though, make sure you drop a like down below. Drop your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Do you guys like what you see so far from Excess or are you guys not too fond of the Rust remake in Infinite Warfare as of what you've seen so far? Whatever it may be, feel free to drop it down there. But if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have here. Infinite Warfare, DLC 2 Continuum, Modern Warfare Master, Black Ops 3, and COD 2017. All that stuff we got you covered here up on the channel. And if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that is the best place to get connected to me here outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike my conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below if you guys want to toss a follow. But all that said and out of the way, thank you dudes so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Might as well be cool. I espresso. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Take care and peace.